Of all the leadership skills that you could learn, mindfulness might be the most important. So how can you become a more mindful manager? Stay tuned to find out. This is a Candy Factory Mini, Mastering the Mindful Mindset. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Mastering the Mindful Mindset. I'm your host, Jose Johnson. Today, we're gonna to talk about ways that you can use mindfulness as a leadership tool to keep you and your organization more centered and productive. And while I'll be specifically addressing this towards business leaders, the fundamental principles and strategies apply to anyone who's in a position to influence and lead others. So whether you're a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, a mid-level manager of a local business, a teacher or a coach, or just someone who wants to improve their ability to help others, the information in this episode will apply to you. Does mindfulness belong in the workplace? In the hustle and grind world of business, it seems that being all chilled out and zen would be the complete opposite of what a good employer is looking for. Leadership should be ruthless and cutthroat. Sales and marketing should be aggressive and relentless and workers should be machines that churn out the endless demands placed on them. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Many organizations haven't integrated mindfulness into their culture because they view it as an unnecessary expense. But mindfulness is not an expense, it's an investment. And any good leader will make decisions based on the ROI, the return on investment. So let's look at the upside of embracing a mindful culture in your organization. Mindfulness has been proven to be an effective tool for reducing stress, and stress is a major concern for any organization. According to one European study, 550 million working days are lost every year, and over half of those days were as a result of stress-related issues. The study also found that 80% of employees feel that work was a major contributor to their stress. High levels of stress lead to employee dissatisfaction and turnover, and considering that the average salary in the U.S. is about $36,000 a year, and the cost of replacing a single employee is estimated at 200% of their annual salary, if a mindfulness program can keep just one or two employees, it's more than paid for itself. That's why high-profile organizations like Google, Nike, Apple, the Mayo Clinic, Goldman Sachs, and Target have all instituted formal mindfulness programs to better help employees reduce stress and increase engagement and productivity. An added benefit to incorporating mindfulness in your organization is that not only are your employees more centered and productive and likely to stay, it also helps to recruit new and better talent. When a new recruit is sizing up what organization to commit to, a company that shows commitment to well-being of their employees scores major bonus points. So now that we understand the benefits, how do you go about making mindfulness part of your organizational culture? Well, as a leader, regardless of your title, the most important thing to remember is that people follow your example. Instituting corporate mandates to behave a certain way have little impact if the actions of leadership are the direct opposite of what's expected. So if you want to create a workplace environment that is more calm and focused, guess what? you better be doing all you can to become more calm and focused yourself. You must set the example, or to paraphrase Gandhi, become the change you wish to see in your organization. But adopting mindful strategies is not just about being the example. It will actually make you a better leader by making you an even better person. Because let's face it, there's a lot of pressure and responsibility placed on the shoulders of a leader. You're not just responsible for yourself, but for your team and your organization's success. So to do your best, you need to be at your best. And that's where mindfulness comes in. Being a great leader is more than just telling people what to do. It's helping them to realize their potential. And if you're exhausted and stressed out, you're of little to no use your team, your family, your organization, or yourself. Just adding simple practices like mindful breathing, like I've covered in the past few episodes, will help to keep your stress levels down, allowing you to have more physical and mental energy to be a more effective leader. But there are a few additional techniques that I'd like to share with you today. 
The first is to practice mindful communication. Being a great leader means being a great listener. But there's a big difference between hearing what someone says, listening to them, and understanding what they're trying to say. And most often, in terms of a leader being able to communicate with their team, the message often gets lost because of poor delivery. Too many leaders talk at their employees and not to them. A 2019 study published in Frontiers in Psychology showed a direct positive correlation between leaders who practice mindfulness and have learned how to communicate mindfully and the level of satisfaction in those that they lead. Since mindfulness helps you to become less judgmental, it improves your ability to listen without prejudice. And this has been shown to improve the ability to retain information. Another benefit of mindfulness is that it helps improve your ability to manage your emotions. One of the toughest parts of being a leader is to have difficult conversations without stepping on emotional landmines. Emotional outbursts don't do anything to get your point across. In fact, it actually shuts people down so that they aren't listening. And that makes them more resistant to change. So to mindfully communicate, try these three tips. First, listen without judgment. Avoid the temptation to take things personally or to formulate your conclusion before you've heard all the facts. Second, listen for more than just the words and with more than your ears. Pay attention to recurring themes and speech patterns, particularly emotionally charged words. Observe body language. Your eyes will often tell you more than your ears. And third, breathe before you speak. Taking that short pause allows your immediate emotional reaction to subside and lets you communicate your point with clarity. Another great way to apply mindfulness in your organization is to have a mindful start to your meetings. Meetings. Want to see your team panic? Just tell them you need to have more meetings. Death by meeting is something feared in organizations around the globe. But meetings are necessary and beneficial, but only when they're done the right way. One of the best things that you can do is to make sure that everyone in your meeting is on the same page by starting with a moment of mindfulness. Uh, like I discussed in the last episode, our brains want to sync via the process of entrainment. So starting a meeting with an exercise to get everyone into the right frame of mind accomplishes that goal. In fact, one company that I've been a mindfulness consultant for started instituting my reset breath exercise into the start of their management meetings. During the Zoom craze of the COVID era, they found themselves often finishing one meeting and immediately having to jump onto the next one. No downtime, no walking from one floor to another, just an endless cycle of meetings. Now, once I introduced them to the reset breath, they felt that by starting a session with that short pause, doing that allowed the attendants to be able to refocus themselves so that they were more present and receptive for the content of the new meeting. So if you want to give this a try, allot the first 90 seconds of your meeting to reset breathing. If you're not sure how to do that exercise, well, I covered it in detail two episodes ago. If you want to get some added benefit, you can always use what I call a bookend activity, which means that you start and end your meeting the same way. When you're in a meeting, the brainwave state tends to shift into the beta frequency and sometimes even into the gamma wavelength, particularly if there's a lot of creative thinking. So by downshifting to alpha, you provide two benefits. The first is that it prepares participants for the next meeting. And secondly, it helps the brain to better consolidate the information that was covered in your meeting. Another technique to employ is to create a to be list. Now, every leader has been told countless times about the importance of a to do list. You need to have an agenda. You need to have a schedule. But what about a list of how you want to be as you go through the day? Remember, we're human beings, not human doings. So as you block out your activity for the day, think about how you want to be during that time. 
Do you need to attend a meeting about new change initiatives? Decides that you will be more open and receptive to new ideas. Running a training session? Set the intention to be more patient and empathetic. Allow the intention of how you want to be to drive your actions, not the situation. You can use to be intentions in a number of ways, but one of my favorites is to take advantage of the alpha brainwave state that you're in when you're first starting to wake up. I'll often lie in bed for a few minutes after I first wake up instead of just jumping right into my day. Now, now this isn't just a snooze. It's to set my intention for the day. I close my eyes and try to see myself in the various activities I have planned. So if I have a presentation to do, I try to see myself looking and feeling relaxed, confident, and engaging. If I have a training session to attend, I see myself being focused, open, and receptive to new information. Now, you can also put to be reminders in your calendar notes. So when your appointment pops up, it will also remind you to shift your mindset before you get started. And to be's are also a great way to start a group meeting. You can tie in an intention to that moment of mindfulness that I just talked about. So as you're winding down the reset breath, ask all of the participants to take a few breaths with the intention of shifting their mindset to the state that's most conducive to having a productive meeting, like being more creative if you're having a strategy session. So to recap, here are 10 ways that mindfulness can benefit you and your organization. Number one, mindfulness teaches you and your team how to better manage stress levels and avoid burnout. Two, mindfulness can help reduce unnecessary turnover. Three, a mindful work environment helps boost employee productivity and engagement. Four, mindfulness increases creative and innovative thinking. Five, mindfulness helps in the brain's ability to absorb new information. Six, mindfulness helps you and your team become more resilient and able to adapt to change. Seven, problem solving skills are increased as a result of mindfulness training. Eight, mindfulness practice improves physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Nine, a commitment to mindfulness is a powerful recruiting tool. And 10, mindfulness improves the level of empathy and cooperation across your organization. And when you stack up all of those benefits, it's obvious to see that making mindfulness practice a part of your organizational culture is a sound investment. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed our time together today and that you have a better understanding of how mindfulness can help you become a more effective leader. If you want to learn more about this topic or you want to find out how I can help you bring mindfulness into your organization, please email me at jose at josejohnson.com. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future episode, just drop it in the comment section and I'll do my best to help you out. Now, make sure that you subscribe and share this episode with someone that you feel could benefit from this information and also take time to check out all of the other great programming brought to you by the Candy Factory Collective here on the So Good Lancaster Media Network. So until next time, remember, it is what it is, but it becomes what you make it. So make it great. Mastering the Mindful Mindset is part of the Candy Factory miniseries and is a proud member of the Candy Factory Collective. Learn more about Jose at his website, josejohnson.com. Mastering the Mindful Mindset is produced by the Candy Factory Collective for So Good Lancaster, another great project of the Candy Factory, a co-working and social club in Lancaster, PA. Production support by Jason Mundock and Anna Tran. Administrative support by Ann Kirby and Ariana Henderson. Find out what makes Lancaster so good at SoGoodLancaster.com. Candy Factory. Collective.